for the oldest representation of the swastika until now, uh, we have to go back at least uh, 12,000 uh, years uh, into the Holocene. So uh, we go to a region in the north of Ukraine, actually where uh, Belarus, Ukraine and uh, Russia meet. And um, Mezin is located in the valley between the rivers Don and uh, Dnieper. Both these uh, major river systems uh, flow southwards uh, into the Black Sea. Uh, what I want to point out in short is the importance of the big rivers, uh, the importance they had in uh, ancient societies, uh, them emphasizing this within their lore and uh, symbolism. I reckon a long, long time before uh, domestication of or uh, and transport with animals was even an issue. Um, if people would have paddled down that river to see what their uh, what is around the corner, so to say. So uh, yeah, I cannot imagine that being uh, any different. So uh, a river like the the Dnieper, uh, with its almost two thousand kilometers of length, uh, connects a lot of people over a large distance. It would be the primal trade or uh, expansion route, uh, I assume. The, the Dnieper would much later become known as a large part of the Amber Road, by the way. Uh, that is a trade route connecting the north. These... Uh, <coughs> Ice Age uh, birds were discovered in a Neolithic settlement and more precisely in what is assumed to be a ceremonial hut. They were among a multitude of like what looked like uh, ceremonial artifacts or musical instruments adorned with uh, geometrical patterns, uh, mostly of bone and uh, ivory. The Ukraine Philharmonic Orchestra apparently tried to perform a concert using this and uh, did a search and I did the search for images uh, but unfortunately I didn't succeed in finding anything of this sort. I would appreciate it though to be able to, to hear this. Um, it seemed impossible to find better pictures also, especially of the real swastikas and uh, yeah, often enough, uh, the Mezin swastikas that people post on the net aren't, uh, well, they aren't really swastikas in my opinion. Uh, so, yeah, we have an, uh, a mammoth ivory bird figure with a swastika card on the butt. Uh, but what is the explanation if there is, uh, if there even uh, is an explanation, yeah? Mm, I lingered on these birds for a while and uh, then they reminded me of another of uh, other amulets that I had seen before, pendants in the shape of uh, of uh, uh, yeah, water birds, uh, geese, uh, geese or swans. So uh, and those were also found in Ukraine in a site called uh, Malta and uh, also made of ivory and. As uh, mentioned before, these Ice Age birds were found in a ceremonial hut and a shaman would have been the one who tracks the movements of the stars in the night sky. Uh, swastikas are uh, often connected with celestial events, lightning, um, comets, meteors, the sun of course, uh, supernova and other plasma discharge uh, phenomena. The little I know of astronomy gave a new clue. Cygnus rises uh, from the northeast over, over the sky to descend again in the northwest. Uh, same on the southern hemisphere where the constellation is visible too. Um, in the tail of Cygnus, also known as the Northern Cross, we find the giant star Deneb. And uh, Deneb used to be the center point of heaven around which all the constellations revolve. Due to the gyroscopic wobble of our, our Earth um, under the push and the pull forces uh, from Sun and Moon, our polar star goes on a drift encircling the Draco constellation that is coiling around the elliptic pole. Uh, 
Together, to make a full circle, it uh, takes about 25,920 years. The use of the pole star would change about every uh, 2,000 years, approximately. Around 17,000 to 16,000 years ago, uh, Denap would have been in that central position, and it probably has served as a beacon for a very long time. And next to that, a stellar explosion took place around that time. We can still observe remnants of this beautiful catastrophe. Uh, uh, it's a gathering of nebulas uh, called the Cygnus Loop. You will find the Bloom Nebula in there, the Veil Nebula. Anyway, uh, this was an event that lit up the sky for a long time and it would certainly not go, un uh, not go unnoticed by the Neolithic sky watchers. The thing is, we don't know if these people regarded the constellation as being a swan or goose. All we can do is put some snippets of info together and attempt to make a good guess on uh, what their explanations were. So we have the Ice Age birds, some bearing a swastika. We have the bird pendants in at least one other archaeological site. Um, we have also a peculiar rit ritual uh, still known to some isolated communities in which they use an idol of a bird mounted on top of a pole. Does this tradition have anything to do with the polar cult? Is it a reminder of a very distant past when Cygnus was the North Pole indicator? Is it possible that this figurine found in the remains of what is assumed to be a ceremonial hut is a representation of the water bird that swims along the, along the heavenly river, uh, the Milky Way? And uh, does the swastika in that sense represent the celestial pole? Around 17,000 before present, the Milky Way would have appeared to flow from Scorpio at the base of the World Tree or Axis Mundi. The bird appears in, on its branches. A, pe a peculiarity was found in the Lasso Caves in France, quite a distance, a distance away from Ukraine, and that makes it just, uh, the more uh, peculiar. One of the famous Neolithicum uh, drawings shows us uh, the scene in which a human figure seems to be felt by a bison and uh, next to it is a clear drawing of a bird on a stick that would fit in the riddle, be it that the drawings are estimated to be between 20,000 and 30,000 years old. Swans, geese, water birds have fascinated uh, ancient man in many ways. They dip into the primordial, primordial ocean to bring up mud and create the world. It is this bird that laid the cosmic egg, who carried deities along the Milky Way. The coming and going of the migratory birds would represent returning, but nevertheless dramatic events in the lives of Neolithic uh, hunter-gatherers. And to this day we see rituals performed by isolated tribes in order to honor the swans, the trumpeteers that enunciate uh, seasonal change. Bits and pieces of the old custom have remained in the local folklore. A popular belief in Belarus and uh, Lithuania uh, speaks about the souls of the dead flying with birds towards their judgment along the heavenly river and sinful souls would be casted back to earth in the form of meteors. Since the sixth millennium be before present, Cygnus uh, has changed her flight as uh, now the bird dips its head under the horizon but the uh, association with the journey through the spirit world as uh, performed by the shaman has remained in the traditions of the nomadic tribes uh, all over the north and um, it's still embedded in folklore of uh, 
many nations. The bird uh, assists as a guide in, in the journey of the shaman. So the shaman can be uh, born again. Matheson Corollary's site has a description of the ritual on this page about the Guri bird and it's linked below. Mm, this process uh, of regeneration certainly has a connection to the spinning swastika wheel. There is some beautiful work available for those who seek to learn more on the subject of birds in astrometology, but here we are done with the subject for now. Uh, inevitably, the icon of the bird on the pole will return in a later episode, and as for the shamans, they too will uh, return. So yeah, maybe not so much much of uh, swastikas in this one, but I certainly will make up uh, for that in uh, the next episodes. Uh, I hope you got something out of this, and my sources will be linked below. Thank you for watching.